everyone, in today's video I'm going to be going over how I do digital art. Um, so if you don't know, digital art is quite a broad term, like traditional art. There is lots of different aspects of digital art, from photo manipulation to 3D modeling and animation, those kinds of things. So today I'm going to be covering um, hand paintings. Uh, these are done in Photoshop. I'm using Photoshop from uh, Photoshop 2020. Sorry, I think that's the right one. And I have a drawing tablet, and that is the Wacom Cintiq 13 HD. So as you can see, I have my reference photo on the right, and my little portrait piece canvas, if you like, right in the center of the screen. Okay, so the most um, kind of different tools that I'm going to use in digital art that we can't really use in traditional art is Control Z or Control Z, and that is the undo feature, and also layering. So obviously you layer in traditional art, but um, in digital art you have the options to kind of bring some layers forward, delete some layers, move them around, that sort of thing. So I'm going to just use three layers, as you can see on the right, hopefully. Um, so the three layers that I'm going to be using for this piece are a line art layer, which is the top one, a colour, and the background layer. Oh, and also a layer where we do all the colouring on top of. So basically all I did was made a new layer. This is the second layer, layer two, I believe, and then created a clipping mask on top of that layer. So you need layer 2 and layer 1. Layer 1 is the base colour which is the big brown blob and then layer 2 you create a clipping mask. It should be above the brown layer and then that means that you basically can't go over your lines. It's like using masking fluid or masking tape or whatever you like to use and it just means that you can't go over the lines which is super handy and keeps everything nice and clean. So I created the line art and the base colour off screen just because I forgot to record it. Um, but basically those were just hand drawn with a nice simple tool, the tools that I used throughout the rest of the video. Um, and yeah, I just drew them and then filled it in with a nice big brown colour. So this is kind of similar to how I work uh, with acrylics, I find that they're too quite similar mediums, so some of the techniques might overlap ever so slightly. So I picked a nice brown base because I thought that was the colour that was most prominent in this false coat, and then I add other colours on top. And as you can see here, I'm using a really nice big brush and just completely covering the horse's face very lightly. I think it's only 60% opacity. Um, and yeah, I'm just kind of creating those little rough shadows and colours where the kind of eye and cheek are. So again, this is something that I do in my traditional art as well. And I just like to create a nice little base of colours before I add anything on top. Obviously the beauty of digital art is you can work light to dark. Or dark to light, you can work ever which way. So I like to work kind of a mix of both. So I'm not sure if you saw before, but the brush that I like to use is a Photoshop brush. It's not a custom one or anything like that, and it's the brush that I use throughout the whole piece, especially on the foal. And the background I do change it, but just for the foal, I use a flat point medium stiff brush. So this you can find if you go into your brush presets on Photoshop, and then in legacy brushes, because it's quite an old brush, and scroll down until you find the flat me point medium stiff. Um, and I use it at various different sizes as you can see. Um, some areas are larger and some areas are smaller depending on the size of the area that I'm working on. And again the opacity changes depending on how I want to work. So the flat point medium stiff is quite, um, it's, I think it's a chalky brush. Um, but it has a little bit of texture which works beautifully for fur. It's not super smooth, but it also blends really nicely. So the opacity is basically 
like your pen pressure and you can have pen pressure as well pen pressure is really important if you have any type of drawing tablet I definitely recommend getting one with pen pressure compatibility and these you can see are the little circles on the right of opacity and on the it's kind of the far right but one to the left <laughs> um, and this is the pen pressure for the opacity and the pen pressure for the brush size obviously when you're working uh, with paint brushes for example you do have this in real life so it's good to kind of emulate that in digital art and I promise it makes a world of difference having pen pressure and then the opacity again I think it's only at 40% and this just means I can get a really nice kind of soft colour going down um, as you can see it's really rough exactly like how I work in traditional art um, really rough, really jagged, not very really blended um, but just getting down all the important colours that I need. So another great feature about digital art as you can see is the colour palette. You have every colour that you could possibly imagine and possibly want at your fingertips which is so helpful for creating realistic art. And you can just pick this on the bottom left, you see the two little colour swatches, if you click those you can adjust the colours that you want. I do like to use two swatches, um, it doesn't really make a difference but it just means it kind of speeds up the process because I can easily switch between the two and to switch between the two colour swatches I just press X so there are a lot of little hotkeys I think they're called that you can use and that speeds up the process of the drawing as well but as you can see I'm just creating a really soft little base trying to emulate the darkness of that coat there and I did do a little time skip ahead as you could see and that was just to kind of show how I f uh, to focus on sorry the portion above the eye um, I didn't really want to focus on the eye itself or uh, the cheek because the cheek was just a really dark space um, but I wanted to focus purely on the fur for this video And here you can see I'm just kind of blending the two colours together. So I think I'm using quite a lower pace so you can't quite see but I think it's like 20% or 30% and I'm just really softly blending them together. I don't really like to use any blenders, there are a few like smudge tools but I prefer just to use the brushes with a really soft pressure and just kind of pick the colour and then blend them together and then I also use the colour picker so when the colours overlay over each other I pick the colour in the middle of those and then use that to blend into each other so it's kind of I guess if you had three pencils you pick the lightest and then the darkest and then you blend with the middle colour that's all I'm doing when I do that Another great hotkey is the ALT and ALT basically means that you can colour pick a certain area on your reference photo or on your painting and that will create that colour swatch for the area that you've colour picked. And as you can see again just softly blending in those shadows around the eye. So I created kind of a rough base of colours and then what I do is I go back over the area and do kind of the exact same thing but refine it a little bit more so there's now more colours that are going into the piece and I'm taking a little bit more time to kind of add those in rather than going over the whole broad area and again as you can see I'm using the exact same brush but I'm changing the size as I see fit so using a smaller brush when I want to get into the tiny little crevices and the little areas on the eye and then a larger brush for creating the base coat for example. And again just colour picking areas from areas that I've already worked and using those to blend into each other. As always paying really close attention to my reference photo, making sure I look at that and then look at my painting. 
I think I ended up moving my reference photo to the left hand side so I could see it better because my hand was actually covering it. And then again as you can see just picking those colours out and then changing the size of the brush as I needed. And when it comes to the top layers I like to use a bit of a harsher opacity so I usually don't go anything lower than 50% and it's usually more around the 70-80% and mark. It really doesn't matter if you're exactly the same brush size or exactly the same opacity as me, just do what you see fit and yeah just kind of aim for around that mark if you want to create something like this yourself. I don't really like sharing what size brushes I use um, and this isn't just because I don't want you to not have any information but I think it totally depends on the size of your canvas that you have. Um, so this canvas was the 3500 pixels wide and 2500 pixels um, high I think. It was around that size um, and then I kind of picked the size of the brushes that I thought worked with that size canvas. I hope that makes sense. If you've ever done acrylic painting or oil painting, I'm sure that makes sense, like you pick the size of your brushes depending on the canvas that you use. This is the exact same thing. As you'll see in the video, there were certain size brushes that I did find I liked a lot more for certain areas than others, um, especially the hair. I think I like to go around 12 for larger parts and then like 10 for smaller parts. So here I'm just using a 15 size brush and just kind of getting in those little bits of detail. So I'm just marking out the anatomy of the fold. There's not really any fur detail going in at this point, I'm just getting those lights and darks in. This reference photo is from Pixabay and I will link it in the description below. Um, but I really liked how you could see lots of different textures in the fold because it was kind of losing its coat on its face. Um, but also the lighting, I do really quite like dynamic lighting. Not a very popular opinion, but I really like this reference photo so that's why I picked it. And here you can see I've changed the brush size now. So we're in a size 12 and we're just adding those little highlights into the eye. So I'm not sure if you can see but I'm just doing really really tiny little marks with my brush. So these are really small little almost scratches, almost dots even, on just above the eye and that's because I'm creating a little texture of kind of fur and skin just above that eyeball. And again this is quite a sharp, strong opacity and a small brush. Um, I find that a lot of the process for digital art is quite repetitive um, just because there's kind of only so many techniques that I use so I kind of create a base coat and then create another one and then details on top and I haven't found a brush that I like for creating fur so every fur strand that you see is done completely by hand which is a positive and a negative I think because I think it adds to the realism that some brushes can take away from a piece but also it's very time consuming and I'm sure there are brushes out there that do really work for fur but personally I haven't found any that I like so I like to do fur by hand which is very time consuming and is very repetitive and this is a medium that I have found definitely tests my patience So the main reason for creating this tutorial is because it's a medium that I absolutely love and is where I started doing art, especially realistic art. I started off using Windows Paint and then I finally got Photoshop and I started using that and I started with a mouse and then I got a tablet and I've kind of just grown as I progressed, if that makes sense. Um, so yeah, I started with some really basic equipment, but I find that this medium is so helpful 
because you have every color that you could use um, you can use lots of different techniques like light to dark you can obviously erase any mistakes um, but I find that it really helped me progress my traditional art I was never very good at traditional art if you've ever seen some of my really old pieces and then as I kind of grew digitally my traditional art also started to improve um, there was a couple of years where I only did digital art and then when I moved back to traditional I noticed such a massive improvement between the two like pre digital art and post digital art there was such an improvement on my traditional art as well so I found that they really do it really does help you improve and vice versa the traditional art has helped me improve my digital art as well they do really bounce off each other at least in my personal experience so I totally recommend trying this medium if you haven't already it's I love it so much So again, as you can see, just looking at my reference roll and then adding tiny little dots. So again, this is a quite high opacity. I think it's about 80%. Um, I'm not even sure, but again, adding tiny little dots this time. So I noticed that the texture just above the eye was kind of a little bit dotty, kind of more skin showing through. So I did tiny little dots. And yeah, again, very high opacity on this area. Um, so opacity is kind of like when you use water with acrylic so the less water you add the more opaque your portraits will be the more opaque your paint dots will be if that makes sense so the less o opacity you use the more it will stand out I hope that makes sense I'm sure you know what opacity means anyway um, but yeah, basically, especially with digital art, the colours don't really blend so much. So if you've ever done acrylic art or oil and you've over blended and it gets kind of muddy, well digital art doesn't do that because the layers literally layer over each other. You can't blend them together. So opacity in digital art is really quite important. I mean, this is your blending tool if you like. This is how you blend one colour into another because it's not a wet medium. You can't just blend them into each other. You have to use opacity. One of the downsides of digital art I think is that if there's nothing physical to use you have absolutely no texture. I do have textured pen nibs. Uh, they're like a felt nib which creates a little bit of drag when I use them on the tablet and that is really good for kind of creating a traditional type texture but obviously it's nothing compared to a canvas or a paper it is incredibly incredibly smooth which can take quite a bit to get used to and why I also like to create hairs very individually because when you have paper or a textured paper especially you can really use that textured paper to help create the illusion of fur and obviously you don't have that digitally so I like to create them hand by hand by hand, stroke by stroke, one at a time. So hopefully as you can see then, I just use the colour picker tool, so I press alt on the little grey area above the eye and then use that colour to kind of add a little bit more detail. And again just present all and then that colour picks the area that I want which gives me the colour that um, I use next. So like I said before the process is quite repetitive. A lot of kind of just doing the same strokes and it's very individual with this medium. Um, but again, it is a medium that I really enjoy, so I just really wanted to create a little fun piece and share this video for you guys. Another few hotkeys I think might be important to mention are the brush tool, so you can easily get select the brush, which is B, uh, the eraser or rubber, which is E, and 
also save, which is super super important, don't forget to save. My computer has crashed quite a few times and I've lost projects, so yeah, let's control S. Um, there's uh, so many more that you can use, just like Photoshop, there's so many things you can do in this program, like it's mostly used for photo editing. Um, I've also animated in it, so there's so many tools that you can use, there's so many hotkeys. I understand completely how it can look scary or really off-putting, but honestly you really only use about 10% of this program when creating digital art. Uh, there's some things that I couldn't tell you how to use because I've just never even tried. Uh, so yeah, try not to be too scared by the medium. The really important thing is kind of your brush tool, your eraser, and layers. I think that's honestly probably the most important thing that you need to remember. Obviously Control Z is really useful, but yeah, you don't really need to understand any of the other things on this tool, <laughs> on this program, sorry. So again, just add in little details. Paying attention to my reference row because there's kind of little highlights on this corner of the eye there. And again, this brush is the brush that I use throughout the whole of Drawing This Fall. Um, I will change it when doing the background, but just for the fall, this is the only brush that I use. So I use this brush for creating the big brown blob that the fall's on little layers where I've just got patches of colour and the fur. I used it for absolutely everything, it's one of my favourite brushes and yeah, the only one that I really ever use. So as you can see I'm just using a larger brush when I need to kind of blend areas in and then again changing the opacity and the pressure that I put on my own tablet with my pen. It's kind of a little bit harder to gauge how much pressure you press with the pen. So have a little bit of a play around first maybe and see how you can use that if that makes sense. And again as you can see I think I unfortunately forgot to record when I started doing this top layer of the head. There are a few moments like that unfortunately. But I just created the base again like I did before focusing kind of on the clumps of hair as you can see there's little highlights now where the hair will go and again just adding a little bit more details on the eye. So I like to kind of work from the eye, beauty again of digital art is you can't really smudge it so it doesn't matter which way you work, left to right, right to left, from the middle, outwards, so I like to work from the eye, it's just my favourite place to start and then I kind of spread out as you can see starting with the cheek and then I went up to the top of the forehead and again just kind of using the big brush and going in and creating those first strokes so this is just a very rough kind of shadows plotting in where my darks are gonna go and then adding the details over the top but as you can see it's just a really big brush you can see with my cursor how the pen is going in the direction of the fur Unfortunately in this video you can't see that my hand is completely doing all of this motion. I have a pen on my tablet and yeah, I'm doing the same things that I do in traditional art when I use a pencil on paper. I'm drawing in all of these little marks. I think I shared a couple of videos on my Instagram where you can see that I'm like drawing in with my hand. And then change into a smaller brush when I want to do smaller areas. So like what I do with traditional art, I kind of create the clumps of fur and then the details over the top. So I like to create kind of clumps of fur with like a 12. These are kind of little larger strands. And then I drew over those and mostly with the shadows and then again with the highlights. And then for the really kind of high points and really small little wispy hairs, I used, I think it was a 7, and that was the smallest brush that I went, and this was kind of the brightest, most light area of the fur, and that was with the 7 brush. As you can see, I'm just kind of trying to 
blend these areas and clumps of fur together now. So my initial base wasn't very accurate as you can see. So here there was kind of a little bit more grey colours, a little bit more kind of grey brown, kind of like a pastel brown I guess, if you can have a pastel brown. Um, so I'm just kind of trying to mark those in now. Basically just adjusting anything that I did on a layer before. I'm going over it again to make sure that it's kind of nice and accurate. So before doing any fur detail I do try and like to get the fur base kind of as accurate as I possibly can. I am quite lazy so I do readjust it when I add the details in. But I do like to try and get as much of it done as I possibly can in the messy rough base layer. And then I can add the details over the top and I don't have a lot of work to do if that makes sense. Because I've kind of adjusted everything as it needs to be. So again this is very similar to how I work in traditional art, I just kind of create a little base and this is very rough highlights and very rough shadows. So it's not the lightest light and it's not the darkest dark and it's not very accurate, it's just splodges and blotches of colour kind of in the direction of the fur and then I do the details over the top as you can see now. I'm just adding a little highlight on the top of the kind of brow bone of this fold. And I'm doing that with kind of a large brush and then making it a lot smaller for really highlights and really kind of detailed dots of areas. So again I really like this reference photo because you can see different textures of fur. So as the foals kind of grow they lose the baby coat and that's kind of what's coming through here. It's got a kind of more adult yearling coat coming through which is a lot shorter fur and then the longer splodgy brownie bits are the baby fur. So as you can see I'm just adding really tiny tiny little brush strokes for the shorter new fur. And this is a little bit darker than the baby fur as well. The baby fur is nice and golden brown compared to the darker adult fur. And one thing I like to do as well with digital art is kind of create a glaze if you like with my paintbrush. So I just use a very low opacity, I think I usually settle for around 20 or 30 opacity, very very low. And basically um, if you've ever done a glaze before it's like a watered down acrylic paint if that makes sense, really watered down. So when you colour over your dry acrylic it just kind of creates a nice glaze of colour. I'm not sure how to describe it. It just kind of softens your colour down a little bit and adds a hint of brown, let's say red and brown. It adds a hint of brown over the area that we've already worked and I find this is a really good blending tool and it also kind of adjusts anywhere where the colours aren't quite what I want them to be. So for then over the little brow bone of the eye I just use a little darker glaze that kind of blended to the bottom of the eye brow bone into the top and that was just with quite a large brush and a low opacity and again you can see I'm using quite a large brush here I think this was around a 15 um, yeah quite a large brush and I'm just adding really rough first strokes. You can see I moved the light into the dark and on the dark into the light on the right side just underneath the ear. And again they're really nice and rough, quite large, not very detailed. But just starting to create the illusion of the... And then darkening it up again, colour picking an area from the cheek that I really liked. And then going over the top again. So with this I kind of picked the darkest area that I wanted, so this is kind of under the eye and under the cheek where the eye is I guess. That was the darkest part of this fold. So then I didn't want any other colour to go darker than that, so that's why I colour picked the colour that I use. It's quite similar to colour mixing in traditional art, you kind of pick the colour you've already colour mixed and then use that to be the darkest colour on that piece. 
if you constantly kind of change that hue it can kind of throw the piece off a little bit so I like to colour pick the, the colour I've already used and then use that for any other really dark areas. And then again as you can see here just kind of blending or adding sorry, a little bit more shadows right underneath where the forelock sits. And this is just near the ear again adding quite big fur strokes with quite a big brush. Okay so as you can see now I'm just kind of plotting out any of the dark areas kind of creating clumps again the top half of this horse's head is very fluffy because it's still baby fur so it's very long in texture so I'm just kind of creating the nice long clumps of fur. And again just colour picking kind of the darkest area and focusing just above where the eyebrow goes. Eyebrow? Eyebrow bone? Brow bone? I'm not sure. Um, yeah, just that little area of the eye there. And then pushing the dark areas kind of into the fluffy part of the full sphere. Again, looking at my reference photo, as you can see, I've moved it now so I can see it a lot more easily and I'm not covering it with my hand. And yeah, just kind of looking at that and then looking at my painting and jotting down the areas that I see. If you do struggle to kind of see colours, then the colour picking tool is a very good tool to use. On the reference photo, you can kind of jot out certain areas that you want. Personally, I wouldn't recommend using this too much as it can kind of... You, I personally didn't like learn from it. I found that kind of just looking at the area and picking my own colour and then mixing that was a lot more helpful and only using the colour picker tool when really really necessary and when struggling um, but if you want to use it more that's totally fine, that's up to you I just wouldn't recommend it and try and pick your own colours when you can but again these tools are here to use so if you do want to use them feel free I'm not going to tell anybody what they should and shouldn't do <laughs> this is just personally how I like to do my digital art painting. So again as you can see here I've got a really small brush now so as I said before the kind of brush sizes that I started to really like for the fur was the 12 or 15 for really kind of bigger clumps of fur and then when I lighten the fur I would use kind of a 10 or a 9 and that would kind of be the next layer of fur which is a little bit thinner so you can see the colours that I already put down before I'm not completely covering over them and then for the very final highlights and the really kind of wispy hairs I like to use a 7 and again this completely depends upon your canvas size this is just the sizes that I like to use for the canvas I was using but I'm just kind of explaining the sizes so that you can kind of get an idea of what you might want to use when you work. I would recommend if you can work on a larger canvas size. I like, really like 3500 by 2500. As a general rule I find that that is just the best size for me personally. It means when I Kind of want to use a smaller brush it doesn't go very pixely because if you kind of use a really small canvas you don't you can't use really small brushes if that makes sense because they kind of go really kind of pixely and grainy and it's just not what you like and too big you kind of have the opposite problem and it also takes up a lot of space so that's the canvas size that i recommend and as you can see again i'm just using the smaller brush to add the highlights on my drawing So as you can see um, using the technique that I used, talked about before with the 9 and 10 brushes you can see how I'm starting to get a little bit more detail coming through now, the hairs are starting to get a little bit more wispy, again these are completely done one by one as you can hopefully see, this is just the way that I like to do them. 
And again, paying close attention to my reference photo, I'm jotting in kind of the highlights. You can see that they're not perfectly bright, that they're not exactly the same colour just yet, and that's because I'm just kind of layering down. So I'm working dark to light, I think. <laughs> I've got my shadows down, and then I'm adding kind of lighter colours slowly and slowly. So as you can see I'm kind of using this mid-brown colour, it's a shame I don't have like colour pencil names to give you or anything, it's kind of just a middle brown tone colour and very kind of grey and very, it's like kind of exactly in the middle of the brown. Um, and that's kind of the colour that I used the most for that area and then added highlights over the top. And then again going over with the grey. So as you can see from the brow bone into the fur, I used kind of a more grey, darky, a more grey and dark colour to kind of blend those two areas together. Because again, there wasn't a harsh line, there was a softer blend as it kind of went from grey to brown fur. And hopefully as you can see as well, I do kind of zoom out of the portrait do you kind of zoom out of the window and so I can kind of take a step back and really look at the piece and see what's working and what's not. I find this really important in again digital art and traditional art uh, so yeah hopefully you can see how many times I do this in this video. Um, so to do that I just use a little navigator and if you don't see this on your Photoshop you can just add it from window and then I think if you scroll down it just pops up as navigator and then you can drag it wherever you want it to be and that's where mine is and yeah you can just easily kind of zoom in and out and you get a nice little thumbnail of your portrait which I find is really helpful to use. So I like to use the brush obviously to create the fur but I don't really use too many tools as I've said before um, I try and keep them very limited to again keep this medium as close as possible to traditional art um, obviously if you want to go crazy there's so many different tools you can use and explore so please feel free to do so but again it's just how I like to work so I try to stick to just the paintbrush tool or the brush tool with the, let me find which brush it is, with the flat point medium stiff brush and the eraser tool. Those are kind of the two tools that I really mix between them, mix between um, the most. I wouldn't even say that I use the eraser tool that often, I kind of just paint over an area if I feel like it needs to be corrected. And again, this is something that I do in acrylics, instead of kind of trying to rub anything out, which you can't really do, I just paint over that area instead and it just covers up any kind of mistakes or anything I don't really want there. And again, just using a really small brush, this is a number 7 brush, to create the wispy hairs as you can hopefully see. This is again the same as I do in most of the mediums, like traditional art with coloured pencil I use a slice tool or I use a white pencil. And in acrylic I just use again a really small brush. And again this is quite a high opacity, I can't remember if it was like 80 or 90 but it is definitely on the higher end of the scale. So I just want to talk about opacity again really quick just to kind of explain it. I'm not sure if I've explained it well enough already. Um, opacity is basically how I blend. It's the blending tool that I like to use. Um, if we're talking about it in like acrylics, it's how much water you use or thinner that you use. Um, and it basically just means that the colours kind of lay over each other and you can see the previous layers underneath. So if I was to put a big purple over the top of this, the other browns would show underneath because the opacity was low. If the opacity was really high, say 100%, all you would see is the purple. 
So I hope that explains opacity a little bit more. It's basically yeah, just how I blend the colours together. And again, just using my really small brush to add highlights, I kind of mix between lots of different colours as you can hopefully see. Um, because there are lots of colours in this coat, it's not just one or two, there are different layers and I try and mix up how light I go for certain areas and how dark I go for certain areas. Again, one thing I kind of briefly mentioned at the start but didn't really address is the layers. And for pieces like this, especially on the horse, I only like to use a few layers. So the layers that I have are my line art, which is the top layer, kind of all of my painting, which is the second layer or third layer, and then the base colour, which is the big brown blob, and then the background. But that doesn't really count because it's the background. So I really only have three layers. The layers are kind of important if you accidentally kind of, if you colour on the wrong layer it can really affect how the painting looks um, because that means that you can't really work over the top of it or like if you work on the line art layer and you completely paint on the line art layer that means you then can't remove that layer if that makes sense. Um, so I guess the best way to describe this in traditional art is if you've ever projected a line art onto your drawing. Imagine if you can't now remove that projection because you've painted over the top of it. <laughs> like, that obviously wouldn't work, you obviously couldn't do that, but that's basically what you've done if you paint over your line art layer. Or you paint onto your line art layer, sorry. You can obviously adjust where the, the layers sit. So my line art layer is on top, my painting layer underneath, and then the brown blob underneath that. Yeah, so you can kind of move those around and how you move them again will affect how the painting looks. So as you can hopefully see, the line art layer here is actually hidden and that's because it was kind of very rough. I didn't, I kind of covered, I tried to move it underneath the painting layer but I found that that really covered the line art layer over, up. So I moved the line art layer over the top so I could still see it but it could also be taken away. So again, this is like my projector line art. <laughs> so I can put that projection onto my painting and take it away as I need to. It's really just kind of a guideline for where the nose sits or where the eye sits or where the bridge of the nose goes, if that makes sense. Um, and yeah, that's basically how I do it. Again, the big brown glob is just to make sure I don't go over the lines. It's basically my masking table, my masking fluid or brisket film, whatever you want to call it. That is all these layers do. And I hope that makes sense. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's all the layers I use. I try not to use too many. Again, just because I really do want to keep this medium as close to traditional and art as I possibly can. Just because I find that helps me improve on both. I find, like... For example, if I used every tool in digital art that I possibly could, some of those tools wouldn't be available in traditional art, so I wouldn't be able to carry as many techniques over from one to the other, if that makes sense. Again, if you want to use lots of different tools, you can do, that's completely fine, like layers for example, if you're not very confident doing it all in one, you can completely add more layers, but this is just how I like to do it, so I thought I'd share my process through digital art. Okay, so I think I'm going to end this video here just because the rest of the process is quite repetitive and yeah, there's not really too much more I can go into detail about. Uh, hopefully in the future I will make um, full tutorials as I go through the piece in real time and do a time lapse at the same time as drawing so I can better explain how I do everything that I do. Um, but for the meantime, I hope you've enjoyed the video, I hope you found it useful and I really would love to see if you create anything in digital art, please let me know, I would absolutely love to see it. This isn't a medium that gets enough love, especially in pet portraits in my opinion. I know there are plenty of beautiful artists out there that do do it, but I would absolutely love to see more digital art, so please tag me in anything that you create. 
Um, I, yeah, I just love to see it. It would make my day. Yeah, I hope you found it useful. If you have any questions, please let me know. Uh, if you really liked it, comment down below, leave a like, and maybe subscribe. Um, but yeah, I hope you found it useful. I will also include a time lapse over on my Facebook page and maybe on my Instagram as well. So if you want to see the full piece, I will make a time lapse and I'll put that up on my Facebook page so you can see it throughout the whole piece. Um, but yeah, thank you so, so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye!